the world's come together nicely to um, handle COVID-19. I mean, we've come together as a collected community. Does that help us with climate change in the future, do you think? Chris, it's a really good point to make. Uh, climate change is a difficult conversation for so many of us. And what I think we're quickly realizing and appreciating is a global community has come together to tackle this COVID-19. What would it look like if a global community tackled climate change in this capacity? Uh, I think the conversation about Corona, about COVID-19 is uh acting as if it's a test for what we could possibly do with climate change. I mean, the, the, all of a sudden, the money's been there and the will has been there to do something. And climate change is one of those things that will present more challenges to us. And, and if we just go to the medical side of it, um, we look about the transmission of more diseases possibly in the future, right? Yeah, and it's going to be so nice to hear some comments from our experts, uh, Peter and Marta, today on this topic. Uh, you know, uh, climate change has the potential to affect how these viruses and diseases are going to affect people. And uh, in a warming planet, uh, what does that effect look like? And so we need to spend some time uh, particularly paying attention, I think, to the modeling of this. And so... Oh. When we see intervention, when we see uh, the opportunity to pay attention to the scientists, uh, what they're telling us about the virus, what they're telling us about diseases around the world through the modeling, what would that look like if we paid attention more to the climate science and the climate modeling? Well, let's talk about the modeling. We'll bring Peter and Peter and Marta in. You've been doing lots of modeling, both of you, um, but Peter in particular at University of Toronto. I, I, I think it's been quite striking how not only has the global community come together to tackle COVID, but also how we are all of a sudden, in my opinion anyways, paying more attention to what scientists are saying. All of a sudden, you know, you turn on the TV and everybody's familiar with what a model looks like, what an epidemiological curve looks like, what R0 uh, means and all these things. And with climate change, it's been around for a lot longer. And in some sense, it's been more abstract in the, in the heads of people. You know, with COVID, within a matter of months and now within a matter of days, we can track the number of dead people, the number of infected cases, et cetera, on the web. With climate change, it's always been this thing that will at some point in the future come and hurt us. Um, so for human nature, that's very difficult to deal with. And it's these long-term predictions that, uh, we have been making as modelers for 30 years, but uh, I'm, I'm I'm sort of expecting maybe as a fallout from this that that, that will also uh, become um, more widely accepted, more widely viewed in, in the general community. 